<clears throat> oh, hi. Today, I'm going to review something brand new today that I could be able to review today. Although tomorrow I'm not going to college. That means I'm hoping that I get my chance to review this new thing I'm doing today. I'm going to review Superman the movie. So, as I know that Superman the movie, aka Superman for short, was an international uh, superhero film that was based on a character by DC Comics, which was co-produced between the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Panama, and the, the United States. And it was supervised by the South Kid brothers. You know, Alexander and Ila Saukind. Even though it's produced by their partner, Pierre Spengler, and written by Mario Puzo, it was the first installment of the Superman film series that was directed by Richard Donner. And it features an ensemble cast, including Christopher Reeve, Marlon Brando, Gene Hackman, Jeff East, Margot Kidder, Glenn Ford, Phyllis Faxter, Jackie Cooper, Trevor Howard, Mark McClure, Terrence Stamp, Valerie Perrine, Ned Beatty, Jack O'Halloran, Mara Sklow, and Sarah Douglas, which told the story of Superman from his infancy as Keller of Krypton, who is the son of Jor-El, and his youthful years in the rural town of Smallville, disguised as reporter Clark Kent as he adopts a madman disposition in Metropolis and develops a romance with Lois Lane while battling the villainous Lex Luthor, which was originally conceived in 1973 during a difficult process with DC Comics. As they brought the rights to that character, they've hired Guy Hamilton to associate with the project with their, with their friends while Richard, while Richard Donner was hired to direct. Since Tom Mankey Wicks, who was drafted to rewrite the script, was given a creative consulate credit, they decided that they could both film these movies, Superman and Superman 2, creatively with principal photography from March 1977 to October 1978. Even though it took, like, only 75 of the film being presently completed, they finished the first film in the naked time for the Christmas holiday season 1978 which was first released on December 10th, 1978, at the Kennedy Center. It would later come out four days later on December 14th, 1978, and a day later on December 15th, 1978, in both the UK and the US. With running time of 143 minutes, it grossed up to $300.5 million and a budget of $55 million. I know this movie came out in the month of December 1978, which was 40 years priorly before Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse came out. As I know, the story of this whole movie, despite receiving financially critical success, thanks to its worldwide box office earnings of more than 20 million that made it the second highest grossing release of that year, they praised Reeve's performance of John and John Williams' music, musical score. It was nominated for three Academy Awards, like Best Film Editing, Best Music Score, and Best Sound, and received a Special Achievement Award for Visual Effects, and groundbreaking breaking its use of special effects and sci-fi telling. Even though its legacy created the mainstream popularity of Hollywood superhero film franchises, and as of 2017 to today, it was selected for first set preservation by the Library of Congress's National Film Registry. Even though it's kind of a fun film to be around, I'd appreciate this awesome movie. As development started from 1975 and concluded in 1978, it was quite awesome for me to enjoy this movie. I know I enjoyed this movie when I was a kid. That was kind of fun for me to watch this movie. But there are some pros and cons that make a lot of sense of what I could see. Well, sort of. If I could learn what this movie came to be, there are some interesting qualities of what I could think of. 
Well, there are some good qualities. Well, the movie soundtrack, it's quite interesting. As I understood about the soundtrack of that said movie, I noticed the soundtrack is quite amazing when the Superman theme song was quite amazing. But if you check out the the soundtrack, if you look at the soundtrack, if you scroll down to see the soundtrack, as I noticed the, the soundtrack, Jerry Goldsmith, who scored Donna's The Omen, was going to, to set to compose Superman. Although portions of his work on Planet of the Apes were used in that teaser trailer. Although Planet of the Apes came out 10 years earlier than this one, it felt kind of interesting about this was one of the most funniest ideas of its good qualities. Well, speaking of good qualities, they hired the, symphon the London Symphony Orchestra in what John conducted it to record the soundtrack. It is quite amazing that everyone seemed to enjoy the soundtrack of what this concept came to be. I don't like the, car the, the soundtrack. It looks pretty uniquely decent. And they also had like some interesting songs for the soundtrack and all of its discs. They're kind of awesome. But as I know, it's kind of good. Also, another good quality is that Superman the movie had some sort of Christ figure lesson that involves a central theme about the campy approach to what Superman could be a Christ figure. And if you look at comparing Superman to the Virgin Mary, it's kind of bizarrely weird to have Clark be mistaken as the Christ figure of wanting to be the chosen one. Since then, Superman, which was going to come out in June 1978, ended up being moved up to December 1978. Well, specifically, this was to avoid competition with Garfield for some reason. For some reason why Garfield took its spot is that a lot of people think why Garfield was involved in it. As I know that Tabby Cat took his spot, it's kind of bizarre what this movie came around. As I know there are some interesting qualities, there are some bizarrely weird... There are, there's another good quality. The extended TV version is quite interesting that it adds so much minutes long to make the TV more longer than you can imagine. But, however... There are some interesting cases of bad qualities I can think of. As I know the special effects of the of the special effects of Superman the movie were only done using some sort of actual screenshot. All they have to use is use some blue screen effects. That's kind of really bad. And another bad quality is that they put the matte arena, the Front production projection effect and the zoom lenses, along with the Zoptic system systems, are quite outdated. Although it's quite a decently outdated take on what I saw on its bad qualities, I noticed if Superman wouldn't be a box of his bomb, they said they'd make a sequel called Superman 2, which featured General's General Zod, Ursa, and Non destroying the planet while Superman tries to travel back in time to fix the damage. Although this concept looked very interesting, it's quite like they took only 34 seconds to do this. The frame rate of those blue screens only take 34 frames per second. But nowadays, most movies of today, courtesy of, you know, what we all knew about, about the whole idea of what we could see, well, movies back then used to have a lot of interesting ideas of using blue screens and green screens when it comes to making movies like anything you see on TV or at the cinema. But, however, that's nothing compared to how animation like this nowadays, all movies don't have to be used on blue screens and green screens like both Disney and Warner Bros. do every day. But for, for kids nowadays, the cinema industry nowadays is now addicted to 2D style CG animation. As I know it's kind of outdated of what 
this movie couldn't handle today's movies that we know of. Yeah. That's an interesting sense of a bad quality. Although, this movie pretty much had nothing to do with the 1948 Superman serial movie and its sequel, Atom Man vs. Superman, since it's not a serial movie for some reason. I had no idea why the ending seemed a little bit divisive. The ending, which involves around Superman undoing the damage caused by a missile and an earthquake while saving the West Coast, he puts both Luther and Otis to prison while flying into the sunrise. And the idea of Lois's car being crashed into an aftershocking crevice, that it would trap her into a field of dirty debris, feels like an unsafe idea to do so. And the and Lex's and Luther's idea to summon the U.S. Army with a nuclear missile test of getting rid of Superman so he could detonate the Sandra's fault with the help of Air Force One didn't make more sense of what this movie seems to be a bit too family unfriendly. However, we all knew this would also Word of God mentions that we were supposed to be getting Superman lives. As I know that the ill-fated Superman, you know, Superman's 3 and 4 were panned by critics because they're way too densier and wackier. But for this unproduced movie, which would be more of an outdated sequel to Superman 3, would it be mostly about Superman teaming up with Supergirl to defeat Brainiac with the help of some sort of black suit in what Jimmy Olsen had rescued him from dying? Well... But much to that charging, Word of God mentions that Nicolas Cage, who was going to play Superman, was said to have fought some sort of a giant spider that was going to show up to pretty much use its robotic bite to pretty much strip his powers away, rather than just infecting him with one small bite of it. However, this movie, which was going to come out in 1998, had something very bad that felt off. The reason why it was cancelled is that WB couldn't afford the monetary risk of what they want to produce this movie. And even though the Superman Lives movie, which was going to be filmed in Pittsburgh, had something very felt off. As I noticed why Superman Lives never got filmed in Pittsburgh, because of the whole problem. The problem why... Pittsburgh would have served as metropolis of what this movie was going to look like had never came into fruition. And eventually, Tim Burton moved on to do Sleepy Hollow in what Kevin Smith decided to get involved in Jay and Side Bob Strike Back and Daredevil. Meanwhile for that, this concept would later be used for Wild Wild West in what the main characters would fight off a giant spider in the third act. Even though these key elements will be later used for Superman Doomsday as well as the death of Superman, although Nicolas Cage, who played Superman two times ago to the movies, would be involved in playing, you know, Spider-Man Noir in, most notably, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And the ninth episode of the second season of Supergirl, titled Supergirl Lives, pays a homage to Superman Lives as the Superman 5 that never was. Yeah, those were the bad qualities I have to tackle with. Despite some odd casting choices that were quite divisive, some of the elements in Superman 5, in what we were supposed to be getting in the UK dub titled Superman Flyby, would be tuned into Smallville. And then, instead, the producers behind Smallville decide not to shoot it in Pittsburgh, but instead the city of Vancouver, which felt like it was quite the right choice to set things right than what Tim Burton would have done it better. But despite the complicated development of Superman 5, let me just try and get the right number. I'd say I'd give this movie just a 7.8 out of 10. As I know, despite its complicated production, I had no idea to think of. But with that out of the way, this is me, Sir Kamala, signing off. Bye-bye.